Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. In a couple previous videos, I was working with this old 1960s telescope that I got at an auction. We've fixed it up, we've cleaned it up, we've repainted it, and we've built this Dobsonian mount, which is a replacement for the missing equatorial mount that it was supposed to come with. Now I'd like to do a few more adjustments with this thing. Uh, the Dobsonian mount works pretty well, but it's kind of hard to get uh, fine-tuning the azimuth. It, it's still a little bit jerky, it still kind of overcorrects, and it can jump back and forth when I'm trying to focus in on a small target like a planet. So I'd like to work on that. I'd also like to work on my astrophotography or astrovideography a little more. I've gotten some basic pictures of planets and the moon, um, mostly using the Sony Handycam that I'm currently filming with, and I tried getting a little cell phone adapter mount for this thing, that didn't really work at all, so I'd like to make some kind of mount for the Handycam and see how well that works for future videography. Now later in the video we'll be taking this out to Sandland, out away from the city where the skies are darker, and we can hopefully do uh, some better astronomy. But before we do that, we're going to do some of these other adjustments. Now I'm thinking I might want some kind of a permanent photography or videography eyepiece, and I actually have several of these 18mm eyepieces. I have the Criterion model, which came with the telescope, and then I have this other one. Uh, it was in that box, and uh, this is a University Optics. I suspect this is a little nicer one. I don't actually know much about my eyepieces, but it just kind of looks higher quality. This looks like something that, you know, came from the store that was pretty cheap, and this one actually looks a little more professional. So I'm thinking I want to keep this one for my own use uh, with my eyes looking into the telescope and treat this one as a spare which I think I'll modify a little bit for use with the Handycam. I'm not sure if I showed this before, this is actually two plastic discs just sitting on each other. You're supposed to use little Teflon things onto uh, Formica, but I didn't have that, so it's basically just plastic on plastic. Now if we want to move this a little more smoothly, we can try some silicone spray. Get both sides nice and clean, give it some spray, and then set the telescope on top of it. That's moving much more smoothly now. And we've also got a little retaining nut to go in the center here if we want to take the base along with us when I move this thing. Now, since I am working with the Handycam, I can't film with it, so I'm back to using my cell phone for filming. I actually killed an old cell phone doing this. I filmed so much with my phone in the early stages of this channel that I actually killed a Google Pixel 3. Apparently just overheated something in the camera so it would no longer take videos. All right, so I'm still hoping to salvage this little cell phone adapter, which was supposed to hold the phone up to the telescope, um, kind of clamp onto the eyepiece. There are a couple problems with this. Uh, there isn't a good way to use this that doesn't clamp down on either the power button or the volume controls. And a lot of phones, if you clamp down on the volume control, that's the shutter button. So it just continuously takes photos or goes into video mode or whatever. Supposedly, you can take this off, spin it around, and it won't hit those buttons. Well, it doesn't work. There's not a good way to use this to clamp on, at least to any phone that I have. The other problem is this doesn't align very well with a phone camera. Supposedly, you can slide this little thing down and use it to line up the camera. Well, it doesn't work very well. This whole thing is kind of gimmicky and cheap. I kind of want to return it, but I could just chop it up and do something else with it instead. All right, so I've mounted the video camera up to the eyepiece, and it's got that image stabilization thing, which means the picture shakes around a little bit. I might have to turn that off. Now, this video camera is a fair amount of weight, and if I just stick it on here, the whole telescope wants to tilt forward. So I've gone ahead and made kind of a clip-on counterweight. That's just a, a bolt stuck on a clip here. Can I stick that on the back of the tube? So we're definitely having some issues with focusing and field of view and whatnot. Now, I know basically no optical theory. I don't remember what the F whatever means. I don't uh, know where my focal point is. I'm basically more of a hit it with a stick until it works kind of guy. So we're going to play around with this a little more and see if we can get it to focus. All right, we brought the telescope out to Sandland, which is about an hour out of the city. So we don't have as much light pollution. We're getting a pretty good view of the moon right now. 
that's about to set, and once the moon sets, we'll be able to see even more stars, check out some planets, see the Milky Way. I don't know how much of that we'll be able to capture with the telescope or how much is going to show up on the camera, but we're going to do our best to do some half-assed astrophotography here. Now fortunately for our night vision, we put in multicolored LEDs in the monorail, so when we're doing astronomy out here, we can throw it into night mode. got a good astronomy night. Um, we camped out here in the monorail again. This is the first time we've camped in the monorail this year. Had to do a little cleanup. Um, there were some wasps living up in the lights here. And then some raccoons had gotten in through our Jeffrey's tube hatch here and left little handprints on everything, as usual. And then um, for the first time last night, I was kept awake like half the night by a little mouse chewing on something like right under my head. So. We definitely um, still need to do some critter proofing in the monorail here, but uh, it's making for a pretty good astronomy spot as well as a nice camping spot. All right, so the telescope worked pretty well. The mount isn't the most stable, so you have to hold really, really still when you're next to it so it doesn't wiggle. I'm also still having a few issues with the autofocus and the image stabilization on the camera, so there was some additional wiggling from that. But I still managed to get a few good images of Saturn and Jupiter, which I'm pretty happy with for now. We're going to wrap this video up here. I might come back to these telescopes in the future. We'll have to see if I do any more improvements or upgrades to them. And then in the meantime, I am doing more radio astronomy with my various uh, redneck satellite dishes and whatnot. So check those out. Like and subscribe. Stay tuned for some of that stuff. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.